Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago Reacts. My name is Michael, I'm an actor here in the city of Chicago and I'm joined by the ever brilliant, the always talented, the one, the only. Oh, it's Zach, also an actor here in Chicago. Guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a, a delicious treat for you today. We are exploring some Seth scene talk and this is specifically Bloons TD6 review, which I did notice that a number of you guys in the comments were asking for this this particular video um, mm -hmm. from us. So, got to give the people what they want. Yes. Um, hey, if you're liking this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else. And more, more importantly, feel free to check out our Patreon if you want exclusive behind-the-scenes content. You also get access mm -hmm. to our full react session. So, we usually react to eight videos at a time in about a four hour chunk. You get all of that, that whole uncut, <laughs> beautiful, tasty mm -hmm. experience. Like before this video, I was literally shoving a donut in my mouth and that we had got, we have been rewarded. You could have watched that with, and it was beautiful. Yeah, the, the live moment when during, during our, our um, recording of a Russian Badger video, we had some lovely, um, lovely neighbors come by with some treats and, um, yeah, it will for that you kid, get all that, that extra gonna be famous. fun stuff by joining our Patreon. You also get uh, full access to our Chicago Rex movies and TV content. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a huge benefit going forward because as more and more reactions release there, you're going to get the full uncut reactions of the movies that yeah. we do there. We still we already have a bunch of movies and some TV shows on there too. So go check that out now. Links in, are in the description down below. With that said. We are getting into Bloons TD6 review, losing it edition. Losing it. Let's do it. All right. Hey, hey, people. Hey, Seth. Hey, Seth. Hey, Seth. We're ready. I live in the middle of nowhere on unpronounceable street on the first floor. There's only one floor. My name is Seth Zintek. Hey, Seth Zintek. Old, I believe in taking care of myself in a balanced <laughs> diet and a rigorous <laughs> exercise routine in the morning. If my hands aren't shaking, I'll take 360 milligrams of extended release amphetamine while doing my daily gel session. I can do a thousand now. After I start to feel heart palpitations, I go to the vitamin closet for multivitamins. <laughs> vitamins. I take two gummy dinosaurs, then a gummy fruit pastel and a single magic bee. Then I chug down two gram paracetamol to slow the approaching migraine while I oh, do the rest of my routine. I always use a painkiller with little or no risk of stomach ulceration because stomach ulcers are incredibly painful and make you die. Then two tabs of zinc, then omega free, followed by a final <laughs> mega dose of vitamin D free. There's an idea of a Seth Seen Tech. Some kind of abstraction. But there is no real me, only an entity. Something <laughs> illusory. And though I can hide my cold gaze, and you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping what? yours, and Seth's losing it, man. Seth so has that lost it. Oh. I simply am not there. Oh. Hey, Seth fucking lost it. to take a short break from the hustle because if you only made two videos in six months, something's not right. And while ADHD medication <laughs> is very useful to satisfy expectation and fit into the psychopathic mold of society, after seven oh, years dude, dude, of spit out the. It's good to don't, take no, a break. No, Since spit out. Oh, in, God, he bit the skin. He bit the getting out peel. Of feeding the colony and playing balloons. Balloons Tower Defense 6. Written and pronounced as if you were dyslexic Lins. is a homeland defense simulator where you and your men are the only thing that stands between life and the complete and utter annihilation. I just have to say, this is very unlike Seth, dude. Yeah, we're, we're, used, we're used to Space Station 13 I know, and like cake. Wizardry A. That makes me think like, that this game is about to get insane. <laughs> it's about to get freaking weird, man. Or maybe all the weirdness was in the beginning. I think I used to play this game no when it was balloons five yeah not six maybe balloons two balloons balloons it is it fun. looks <sighs> maybe it does, not. It, maybe does not. it does look like oddly like there's a sense of familiarity to it which he never experienced with seth so it is interesting i feel like this game used to be really popular mm. 
and then it kind of became well it probably still is to some degree maybe just mm. with more niche of monkey civilization the stakes are high but the premise might sound absurd premise. Blue, He's... Really? how could that possibly be a threat to monkey premise civilization vitamin. i'll tell you because it's a choking hazard the respiratory <laughs> tract of a rhesus macaque is very slim and if mm. a child inhales enough rubber they're going to die of asphyxiation i've never tested this but i'm just assuming for any civilization several generations of high infant mortality and we're on the brink of extinction. And so, the most primitive form of monkey weaponry emerged. The original, decisive answer to the rubber question. Darts. Dart monkeys could finally pop blues yes. from a safe oh, distance. However, they couldn't account for what happened next. You see, for every balloon you deflate, you get two more. That's because they reproduce faster than we can kill. But now, we've introduced natural selection to the balloon population. Tougher, more resistant fibers, translucent material, higher reproductive capacities, and even limited regeneration of lost tissue start being selected for in the balloon population. Thus beginning the eternal arms race between technology Technology and an all-consuming, rapidly evolving bioweapon. You might think this game is a joke, but this review is a joke. It isn't. It's very much a crisis just got released on PC in 2007 situation, where all the critique and anger is coming from people who, one, don't own it, or two, can't run it, because they don't have the RTX 3080 necessary to even boot up the game on low settings. <coughs> like any good game, we begin by starting Cheat Engine, loading the the following cheat table, hooking up the executable, and from there, enable editable values get player. Double click the action value and change it to get player info. It should update with your current values, which you edit by double clicking. Apply them by changing the action value to set player info. If you don't see anything, tab into a different menu and switch back. This will very likely get you banned. However, using every other cheat will not. You can exploit this by earning monkey money, turning on infinite monkey money, and buying anything equal to or below your total sum of monkey money without spending a single dime. Dear Ninja Kiwi, I'm sorry for telling everyone how to bypass your shitty in-game cash <laughs> shop. I don't do it out of pleasure. I do it out of moral obligation to <clears throat> inconvenience anyone and anything that comes out of New Zealand. To play the game, pick a map, pick a difficulty, and try to finish it. For reference, any yes. under hard difficulty is meant for children. Are you a child? I hope not. How did you end up here? Did your mother leave you alone with a tablet, assuming that the cold hard expanse of the internet is is somehow an appropriate surrogate to parental attention. In which case, I'm incredibly sorry. I'm sure your parents <laughs> will take full personal accountability for your impending developmental issues. But I digress. As my good friend Mandalore Gaming often says, can we yes. stop discussing children? Hard is the starting baseline difficulty. Think of yes. it as a rite of passage before the game considers you competent enough to <laughs> this is insane. the actual game. The actual game is Chimps Mode, an acronym which stands for No Continues, No Hard lost, no income, no monkey knowledge, no powers, and no selling. Effectively, pay to win is no longer an option, and a single mistake will undo your entire run. It is the oh, no. test of monkey fortitude. Basically, oh, no. you're training yourself up to handle the worst this game can throw at you without any help. There's many monkeys and many balloons. Different balloons require different monkeys to sufficiently deflate and destroy them. While the most basic and primordial balloon, the red balloon, can be popped by any monkey, the situation quickly becomes becomes more complicated Whoa. as most balloons come in layers, including, but not limited to, camo, lead, ceramic, LGBT, each with their own properties, strengths, and weaknesses. They also come in sizes, regular, and blimp, also known as Moabs, BFBs, Zongs, and Bads. These initially serve as boss encounters, which, following the Dark Souls Miyazaki school of thought, eventually become regular enemies. In general, <laughs> these are gigantic, gestating balloon females, which, upon popping, release their entire brood on the battle field. I would say these are generally slow. Generally, until round 90 when you encounter your first DDT. After 20 minutes of play, which you're going to lose in 2 seconds, there is a common anecdote on the Bloons TV6 Reddit. Never ask a woman her age, a man his salary, and Ninja Kiwi how they recorded their Moab popping sound. Let's talk about monkeys. In total, there's 22 different monkeys across four different trees. Primary, military, magic, and support. Each has their own purpose and place on the battlefield. Dart monkey is your OG shooter. Boomerang monkey has curved shots and can switch hands. Ooh. Bomb shooter counters lead. Tack shooter counters everything else. Ice monkey, glue gunner, 
Nobody knows what they do because nobody picks them. Sniper Monkey has infinite range. Monkey Sub bottoms for the Monkey Dom. Monkey Buccaneer upgrades to the entire East India Trade Company. <laughs> Monkey Ace has yes. nuclear capabilities. Heli Pilot can solo the game. Mortar Monkey is incredibly accurate. Dartling Gunner comes with his own panic button. Ninja Monkey counters stealth. Wizard Monkey counters your ability to see. Super Monkey <laughs> will be discussed at a later time. Alchemist turns lead into gold. Druid turns crops into gold banana farm now i'm understanding why this is a seth scene talk video because yes. <laughs> it's so detailed there's de i definitely played a base version of this game yeah yeah it looks very familiar mm. but it has it has grown a lot i probably played bloons one or maybe i played the game that bloons ripped off <laughs> and made okay. into a series Okay. It turns bananas into centralized banking. Monkey Village supports the home front. Spike Factory keeps out the homeless. And Engineer Monkey is somehow less popular than the Ice Monkey. In reality, you don't have to know all that. All you need to know is the current meta pick. So you can turn your brain off for half an hour and still scavenge some dopamine for your zoomy receptors. Each monkey comes with three different upgrade trees, which are mutually exclusive to each other. You can pursue one tree up to five and benefit from two levels of another. When we talk talk strategy. We use the free number nomenclature, which denotes the number of upgrades in each tree in descending order. For example, this is what it looks like when I smack down a 103 dart monkey, a 200 village, and a 301 alchemist. This is handy to know when somebody starts screaming at you that a 401 alchemist is not the same as a 402, that you're wasting precious animation frames on something that doesn't benefit you, that you have effectively gifted <sighs> yourself out of an expensive investment, and oh instead my of playing Lord. Blues, you should instead consider the rope. The Bloons community <laughs> is nothing if not passionate. On top oh of that, you have God, heroes and many to choose from. So choose wisely because you only get to bring one of them. These include Quincy, who never whiffs, not a single arrow. Sada, my beloved. Adora, who is adorable and also powered by blood sacrifice in the same way as a 33rd degree Mason. Benjamin, who stacks the Benjamins and contributes nothing else. Picking him in a multiplayer game is considered a form of griefing at best and at worst a hate crime and of course funny tank monkey and many more <laughs> so let's talk about strategy this You're is honestly a really like thorough game ninja, followed by a 200 alchemist upgrade alchemist to 301 ninja to 402 smack down a 200 monkey village then place your free 20 heli pilot alchemist to 401 heli to 420 village to 30 and finally finish your 520 heli pilot there and as your current meta pick clears everything from hard to chimps with minimal thinking. But who cares? Secondly, it's not enough to win advanced and expert level maps. And it's certainly not enough to beat boss events. There's two bosses and they rotate every week. Blunarius, the Inflator, and the Lich. I say this unironically. I've seen a lot of erotic illustrations of Blunarius. Porn, if you will. And uh, it makes me act up. Boss events are interesting. On the one hand, yes, you can pay to win. On the other hand, it's not gonna save you. Because for reference, the last round of Chimps Round 100 features a single BAD. This has 28,000 HP. Tier 5 oh Blunarius spawns round 120 with 3 million. And if it's Elite Blunarius, 40 million. So how do we what? overcome numbers that big? How do you so even know what's going on? money we don't have we need free bits of monkey knowledge from a support tree bigger deals backroom deals bank deposits naturally we take benjamin for increased stacking of benjamins then you convert your first monkey farm into a 240 giving us access to imf loans imf standing for the international monkey fund <laughs> take loan, deposit twice wait a single round collect interest cash out and repeat use borrowed money to make more money to make more banks to take more loans to borrow more money then upgrade your bank to 250 or monkeynomics with the descriptor for when you're too big to fail, thus creating the Federal Reserve. And now we print money directly out of thin air. Inflation? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Take more loans, print more money. Get a 500 nuclear sub so we can borrow, print, and spend even faster. Oh but uh, what exactly are we spending towards? We're spending towards a very expensive sacrifice. Because ultimately, there's only one way to win war. Blood. A lot of blood. Money what? is merely the vehicle to convince you. We uh, just need you to die. And so, fittingly, the strongest tower in the game requires a mountain of sacrifice, consuming everything and everyone around it twice because there's two upgrades the true sun god 
is uh, is the second strongest tower in the game. If you're currently seeing this, Look it means this. I fucked up and I have to reset. The vengeful, true sun god is the strongest tower in the game. Also, the leading cause of aneurysms each time I miss a single step in this 35 page wiki article. But he is worth the effort. He can solo the entire boss on normal. On elite difficulty, however, you have to fill every square pixel of your screen with monkeys, sacrifice them all, only to receive a low degree paragon and quit the game very calmly. Confused? Then I invite you to read the 39 page wiki article. Consult this simple what? mathematical formula Duh. for power calculation and come back just as confused. Paragons are tier 6 monkeys. However, their strength is determined by their degree, which is a measure of equality and quantity of sacrifices given. There's four in total. Under optimal conditions, to create all four, we have to put about 200 monkeys into body bags, but the sacrifice is well justified. It's what pretty much the is only way happening? you can possibly clear a boss run on elite difficulty. There's many more modes in this game. Odysseys, which are monkey campaigns. Races, which are gonna get me banned someday. Custom challenges, which have to be played yourself after making them to ensure that it's actually possible to beat. Instead, I use Cheat Engine to make maps that are physically impossible to finish and post them online for unsuspecting victims. And of course, <laughs> my monkey Wall Street. which looks a little like this. <laughs> What? How does what? it even rhyme? How do you even know what's happening? I'm so. How does it? <laughs> player is the shit. What is Arguably, happening? It's harder than single player because you all share the same income. This leads to the inevitable oh, no. situation where everybody picks Benjamin, buys a turn 12 banana farm, and we lose the game. It's a <laughs> lot of fun. It's incredibly fun, interactive, and dynamic. When one of your friends pops down a sun temple right next to your farms, consuming all of your income. Oh, Watch this. No. <laughs> oh, did I clear the whole map? What the fuck? In the industry, this is known as a skill issue. To answer a question I've been hearing, what is Balloon's Tower Defense 6? It is when you can physically no longer see what you're doing. When the screen is filled with yeah. so much shit. But all you're left with is an assault of flashing lights and popping. That's what oh Blue's TD6 is oh. all about. It's amazing. Also, how much you can handle on screen? Great benchmark for your hardware. Cause you'll get somebody <laughs> talking shit about how great their processor is. Just because Rakesh at the Dell store told them so. And suddenly, they drop from the game. Been real quiet ever since. I do, however, have some critique. I've heard so many pops that I've developed tinnitus. I've listened to the soundtrack for so long that if I hear it alone in isolation, my brain fills in the gaps and creates audible popping. But I think that's a fair price to pay. Also, also, New Zealand company jacks up the in-game price of the Australian flag. Very based. Unfortunately, this game <laughs> does run like ass sometimes. It doesn't like being left in the background, and it doesn't close properly for me. So, I made a little batch file to kill the process. I recommend you do the same. It does save progress on maps, so usually you don't lose anything. I think anybody can enjoy Balloon's TD6. I saw one of the top reviews with some guy saying it helped him get over his divorce. If it could help him, maybe it can help you. Before you cast oh it off God. as a joke, and an unserious suggestion. Consider the possibility that you live in a tyrannical society where at any time you can be muzzled, beaten, and put into captivity until you die. Considering these things, maybe it's not a joke. Maybe you're the clown and the punchline is your entire existence. In summary, Balloons TD6, 10 out of 10. Very recommended, very fun. The price is very affordable. If you can't, I recommend gaslighting family members into giving you money, blackmailing relatives, <laughs> or petty crime. Remember, always <laughs> under a thousand. That's the threshold for felonies. Gotta keep that record squeaky clean. Or, as I've heard it said, get that fong out yo boosy, playa. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. This is the end of good videos. Here on out, there are no good videos. I'm tired of living in fear of some commenter coming at me saying, uh, Seth, you actually made a f f factual error. Correct, I did. And I'll do it again. Without the muzzle of quality <laughs> control, I can flow more freely like a sewage drain. As always, a warm thanks to the many members of Emergence Guild generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Seth, man. <laughs> oh my god. Oh.
And oh that can, how do you I can't even like fathom like I think that's what's so interesting is like I'm like, oh yeah, I played that game and then it's like almost immediately it's like Yeah, it's like no, you you really you haven't you have played, you, haven't played you have you've played five percent of mm. the capacity of that game. I love how like wow, this does not look like a set of game stuff we play and then immediately yeah. oh no, it's a oh, game no, stuff we play. Yeah. Incredibly um, complex and requires you know vast knowledge of, of different mathematics and, types and calculus and <laughs> unit types and a 39 page wiki about how to actually beat the boss on the highest difficulty it's level. Nuts. Wild. That is it's so cool though to see like uh, these dives into this world of gaming that I would never otherwise oh, right, understand. Right. It is always funny to be like playing a game and being like, "Oh, like, oh, I'm doing well. I'm pretty good at this." Yeah, and then and just, then just to see like what people do at like the hardest difficulty yeah, there's level, always and I'm like, people that ah, do never it. mind. I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty decent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty yeah, average yeah, or below. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, there's always like, if it's if it's a good game at all, there's always someone out there who's taking it to an extreme. Yeah, that you're not even aware of. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you guys for suggesting that beauty. Um, I don't know. You think we'll play it someday? <laughs> to, that, to that level? I don't know, man. We, I would maybe give it a shot, but, sure. you know, we're more of those co-op games. So, yeah. Yeah. though they do have an online they multiplayer. They do have an online co-op. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not giving you any of my bananas. <laughs> You're not getting any of my bananas. But... We're too competitive. Oh, <laughs> um. Hey, if you like that video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything else. And hey, go check out our Patreons. Consider subscribing there so you get behind-the-scenes stuff. You also get full reactions to movies and TV stuff that we react to. Mm-hmm. Um, so go check that out in the links in the description. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time. Chicago Reacts, baby.